In the mortal realms there are things far older and wilder than the pantheon of gods we have come to know. Before Ilariel claimed Geran as her own, one such god that roamed this realm was Kurnoth, Lord of the Hunt, who was venerated by the peoples and Sylvaneth across Geran. Yet there is a well-hidden secret regarding this god. He was moulded by Ilariel herself from a more ancient and bloodthirsty version of himself which was known and worshipped as the Old Stag. Kurnoth was an ancient and bloody god, but the majority of what we know of him comes from his relationship with Ilariel, where he's known as her spiritual consort, often seen as her equal, and in some ways her king. And he fell in the wars against Nurgle in the Age of Chaos. Ilariel then repeatedly mourned his passing and took up what remained of him in the Spear of Kurnoth, which is the weapon that she wields on the tabletop. Yet this aspect of Kurnoth is dead, Alario's consort, the one that is known to the Pantheon and the population at large. And this is only an aspect of this original god. In the novel Dark Harvest, we learn an alternate retelling of this ancient god. I will be referencing the events of that book in a lot of detail, and it's an incredible book, so if you haven't read it and you're planning to, please stop this video and go read it for yourself, because this is going to have some major spoilers. You've been warned. In Giran, outside the swamps of grey water fastness, lies the village of Wald, where the cult of the old stag tells a different tale of Kurnoth, a different one and a darker one than the god who fell in battle beside Ilariel's forces. In this video we will speak of this origin tale, and tie it together with the public perception of Kurnoth, who we see worshipped by this modern Sylvaneth, to get a complete picture of this ancient god who claimed dominion in Giran before Ilariel and Sigmar. The Sylvaneth battle tomes are a great place to start when looking at the more well-known history of the God of the Hunt. When discussing Ilariel's place among Sigmar's pantheon, the book says this, There are even brief periods of interesting fighting as tensions grow between Sylvaneth glades, particularly between Oakenbrow and Dreadwood. Ilariel herself grows disenchanted with her fellow pantheon members and spends more time alone, attending her growing Sylvaneth or if the season and moon align, with the remnants of Kurnoth, the hunter god who escaped the destruction of the world that was. This is a hint at the original origins of Kurnoth and where he comes from. We already see this close relationship between Ilariel and Kurnoth, her consort, her spiritual consort, her other half, way back in the age of myth, so this is a long time ago, and also that Kurnoth is in fact a deity from the world that was. This is of course referencing the fant Warhammer fantasy elven deity Kurnos, the hunter, who is extremely similar in a lot of ways, especially in regards to his look and his domain of worship. However, we are here to talk about the Age of Sigmar, so I won't dwell on the old fantasy lore too much, but we know that Kurnos was venerated for similar reasons by the old world elves as he is in the Age of Sigmar, i.e. he was worshipped for the hunt and was important in a yearly ritual for the wood elves. This ancient god of the hunt therefore made it to Giran and the mortal realms and is once again worshipped as a deity of the hunt. He is generally in the battle tomes, painted in a positive light, Alario's lover and ally who would die heroically in the wars against Nurgle in the Age of Chaos, only to be mourned by Alariel. This is only part of the story. There is a darker aspect of Colonel's past and origins that has been widely forgotten, but is remembered in the Giran town of Wald. In the novel Dark Harvest, a man comes to the town of Wald from Greywater Fastness to investigate the rumours of a person from his past who knows too much. The town is situated in Greywater Reach, in the swampy marshlands surrounding the Fastness. Now, Greywater Fastness and Greywater Reach, the areas, are areas of conflict between the Sylvaneth and the allies of Sigmar because of the devastation that the Fastness has caused in its growth and is in fact one of the areas where the Sylvaneth are more aggressive towards their Sigmarite allies. In fact, this conflict is aptly described in the book, for a part of it says, Humans and Treekin had an uneasy relationship at the best of time. Greywater Fastness was a sore point, a tumour of iron and fire, growing in the green body of Giran. So we see that this is a quite an interesting melting pot of different beliefs and different conflicts, and it is in this environment that the denizens of the Wald look to Kurnoth for salvation. They are struggling in the swamp lands that happened during the building of Greywater Fastness and also from the aggression of the Sylvaneth, so they have to look to another god. While the main character Haran is at Wald, the town, searching for his old acquaintance, he gets caught up in the machinations of the cult of Kurnoth, who worship the god's older and original form. The mayor of the town, the current Lord Wald, 
was the one that turned his people from Alariel and back to Kurnoth the Hunter. He explains the history of this god to Haran. He was worshipped across Giran in the days before the Ever Queen awoke from her bower and tamed the Jade Kingdoms, another old god discarded in favour of the new. These people remember the Kurnoth that was known as the Old Stag, that was worshipped in these parts in time past. What I like about this is it one of the rare instances that gives some depth to the Age of Myth. We know that Alariel came to Giran and joined the Pantheon in the Age of Myth, and therefore we presume that she elevated Kurnoth, Kurnoth in the same age. So this means that there was an age in Giran where Kurnoth was a god before Alariel and worshipped by these people, instead of it being an instance of time that we don't really know much about. Members of the modern cult in Wald celebrate the hunt yearly, where they wear stag antlers and masks, while they parade through the streets and hunt down stray dogs and other animals and slaughter them in the name of the old stag. Lord Wald himself is seen by Haran, naked on horseback with a hunting party, hunting an ex-con who has had his tongue cut out and a mock stag outfit in the honour of the god of the hunt. But how do we know that this radically different and bloody god in the old stag that seems so different is actually the Honourable Kurnoth, who fell defending the lands from Nurgle. The distant past of this god and origin is explained by one of the characters in the book. They say, It's said when the Everqueen tamed the old stag, she flayed him, and out of the meat of him she pulled a single red seed, and from that seed grew Kurnoth the Huntsman. So what happened to the rest of him? She sank him in the mire to sleep and dream red dreams forever. This is an extraordinary claim, and one that could be dismissed as rumour or local custom, given what we know in the Sylvaneth battle tomes. But as the event of the book shows, this is far from just a myth, there's actually some reality to it. The mire spoken of in the myth is nearby, and it is called the Huntsman's Bower. It is a mire, and a holy site to the cult of this old stag. One of the cultists explains that as times got tough, they turned back to the ways of Kurnoth for salvation and began sacrificing people, even babies, in the, in the Huntsman's Bower, feeding the old god with blood and rousing him from his slumber. The Sylvaneth of the Wald in this area, too sense the coming of the god, and again this suggests some authenticity given their connection to the land. One of the Sylvaneth leaders from the area tell the main character that they are attempting to stop the old god from being roused from his slumber. They even slaughter the sacrifices that the village presents before they can be offered, and they hamper and attack the cult whenever they can. However, not all Sylvaneth in the world are loyal to Alariel. Some have sided with the old god and have become his hounds, twisting into aberrant dog-like forms. The book reads, The hounds of the huntsmen, that is what they are, these twisted Sylvaneth. The others might serve the other queen, but these had a bloodier master. These Sylvaneth actually warp to serve this old god, and again shows the power that he has over the Sylvaneth and people of these lands, because he is an ancient deity, they twist themselves into the reflection of a hound, so they can act as his hounds for the huntsman. The seed that Alariel took was a moulded god torn from a primal bloody god, and formed into the more refined ally of Alariel who exists in her spear, yet the greater whole, the original part, was not destroyed, and by the climax of the books, that body has risen once more from the Huntsman's Bower. It is real. It hunts the main character. It's a giant monstrosity of bark and sap, and the book reads, From a distance it resembled a stag, a big black beast taller than a man, its crown of antlers rising up. Its face was the worst of it. It looked like someone had tried to carve a man's features out of a rotted log, and had stopped halfway. This is a bloody god, and it devours bloody sacrifices, including children and its own worshippers. He demands blood and the hunt. It is easy to see why Alariel, while recognising his primal strength and connection to the land, could not accept the stag in his original form to be part of her pantheon. So, she pushed the original form into the swamp, setting it to slumber, and took a part of him and formed the god that we know in the battle tomes as Kurnoth the Huntsman. And so the primal god was risen up as the effective prince of Giran standing beside Alariel and earning the worship of people and Sylvaneth alike as the Huntsman. We know him as the Hunter, but many, like many gods, Kurnoth has many aspects and forms to his followers. In Dark Harvest we get some more depth to the Kurnoth. The main character sees statues of him in the form of Kurnoth the Killer, 
Kurnoth the Seducer, again showing more depth to the god than the one-sided aspect we see in the battle tomes. However, above all, he does represent that classic hunt, the Wild Hunt. His warriors are of the Great Hunt, and he is a patron of such, yet presumably in a less bloody and demanding way than the old stag espoused, presumably having his image sterilised somewhat by Alariel. Yet this alliance would not last, for Kurnoth was destined to fall in battle against Nurgle in the battle known as the Battle of Tears. Reputedly, Kurnoth was at his weakest at this point because he was in his winter form. Alariel mourned his passing and picked up the Spear of Kurnoth, which contains the last of this hunter god. It's speculated that the Kurnoth Hunters, a unit for the Sylvaneth, are born of Alariel and Kurnoth's union when she summons his spirit at the end of a seasonal cycle. There are those who believe he will return. For example, the warriors of the Heartwood Glade follow the way of Kurnoth, calling the Wild Hunt to destroy the Sylvaneth's enemies, and they believe that through their actions, the god is being kept alive in an ember, and one day will return to them and rise again. Little do they know that in a dark, damp part of Wald, of Geran, Kurnoth has risen again, yet probably not in the form that they'd expect. So thanks guys, that's my collected thoughts on a Kurnoth after reading the novel Dark Harvest, which again, highly recommend you read it even if you've watched this video, still a great book, probably one of my favourite the Age of Sigmar ones, and it adds a lot of depth to what I presume was quite a minor god, and made him really interesting to me, and essentially made me do my first Age of Sigmar lore video. But if you like this content, uh, please give it a like, comment on any feedback, and subscribe if you want more, because I'm definitely going to be covering more Age of Sigmar lore in the future. But that's it for now guys, thanks and have a good night.